what I find really interesting is that we don't just see new products emerging and new uh, individual businesses, but also new business models and whole new categories of, of things that were so far just seemed maybe absurd. Like this is a lamp by a London-based London designer called Alexander de Sassoncino. Um, it is a family of lamps, a big lamp and several small lamps. They are connected when you switch on the big lamp. The small lamps go on or off. No matter where in the world they are, it's for families that live time zones apart or in different cities. It's a very cute, small social signal for people who don't want to always pick up the phone but still signal to their family, hey, I'm alive, I'm at home, you know, give me a call. And what I find really interesting about this is that it came out this year, but that was her master's thesis 10 years ago. At that time, the Arduino was new, Creative Commons Poland had just been founded, the global organization had been around for a few years. In order to build this, she had to first build prototypes. The tools had just begun to arrive. The documentation wasn't even fully translated. That was all done through, you know, through Creative Commons or with the help of Creative Commons. So she first needed to create a whole community that would help her figure out the details. So she started selling Arduinos from her living room. She started hosting meetups. She started running hundreds of workshops just to build and kickstart a community around open hardware. It took her 10 years to, long, to launch these lamps. At the same time, she has launched one of the most thriving communities of you know, innovators in all of Europe, um, which is amazing. But communities is really where you can see these, these new technologies come to fruition and to, to manifest themselves. And that goes beyond business models, I think. There's also, uh, what you see here is, is a fab lab. This is the one in Torino. It's a global network of, of open manufacturing um, facilities where you can go and you can 3D print stuff or laser cut stuff that again has all emerged in the last 10 years and all of a sudden you don't just have individual businesses you have a whole platform, a global platform where people can share their ideas and prototype their ideas and exchange ideas and develop new products, new ideas, new system and I think that's, that's really important to not think in the individual unit in like one product, one, one Fitbit, one one connected thermostat, but to think about the whole ecosystem that emerges around these things. And let's also not forget that this is really important for business, but it also has huge collateral benefits for you know, education, the democratization of, of access to manufacturing, to, to learning tools, to all these things. So as with all new, new technologies, we just see the tip of the iceberg now. We will see the next 20, 30 years, we will see the, the benefits of that. Just like we, we heard in the last discussion, like the benefits of open licenses and free licenses take some time to really show and unfold their full potential. Um, there, there's also, as a side note, openness is also the only line of defense, basically, uh, when it comes to security and user rights. I don't need to introduce this gentleman to the Creative Commons audience. It's a Cory Doctorow, a science fiction author, the first person, I think, who published a book on the Creative Commons license. Uh, he now has a new, a new gig. He works with the Ele Electronic Frontier Foundation to fight for user rights and openness in connected products, in the Internet of Things, um, where we simply do not know yet what... We don't know the basic rules of how these things are going to play out, but it is already clear that openness is the way forward uh, if you want to preserve user rights, just like we don't want, you know, copyright to stifle innovation. We should not have, have proprietary licenses in the hardware space. I would further highlight one area in particular where I think we can all uh, see a very interesting, where we're all headed for, uh, headed for a very interesting uh, focal point, and that is the smart home. It's, it's something you will read about in the newspaper every day when you start paying attention. The, open, uh, the, the smart home is identified as one of the major growth markets globally, but like, you know, the, recently Google bought a thermostat company called Nest. They paid three billion dollars for it, and so all of a sudden lots of heads just turned and went, whoop, there's money in this, and all of a sudden everybody is all over the smart home. What you see here is one in is a smart home in Turin, Italy. It is built by the people who, do, who also do Arduino, and by Bruce Sterling, the science fiction author, and his wife Yasmina Tosanovic, 
and they want to build an open source smart home. And basically, you can just say, hey, can I, can I sleep there for two weeks? I, I will install some stuff, and we can all see if this is fun to live with or if it's painful to live with, all these connected things. And my wife and I are, um, recently went there and had a lot of interesting discussions because, like in so many of these emerging technology questions, we just don't have the terminology to even ask the right questions yet. We just don't know what it means when we walk into a smart home and we know, you know, there might be a connected fridge. What does it do? Does it order milk or does it also scan my passport? Like, we just, we just don't even know which questions to ask yet. And so I'd like to very quickly plug one little research project that my wife and I actually started around this. You'll hear her talk later. Um, and that is an, an open source book. It's also um, available online and we, we keep adding to this and plenty of people keep adding to this. Just a, a small research project where we try to figure out how the open source connected home can work and how it can respect user rights and also uh, foster innovation in a, in a user friendly and consumer friendly way. So thanks to you again, not just for, for being here and for inviting us, but also uh, for being this community that helped spark this, this revolution. <laughs> Thank you.